This $30 chair was given to me with the question, can the chair be fixed? It's got a broken leg here, a person was rocking on it. Well, it can be fixed, but it needs a little bit of math and a little bit of thinking. So let's do a little thinking before we do the math part. The chair's leg here broke, and it's not the rocking's fault necessarily here. The leg doesn't have straight grain. Here the grain is running on a 45 or so degree angle. You can't have a chair leg or shouldn't have a chair leg with a grain on an angle. By straight grain, I mean this. Chair legs should have straight grain. You can see the grain is running in a straight direction, not on a 45 degree angle, so it doesn't crack and breaks the same way when it's stressed by rocking. There will be rocking that's not going to be eliminated so here is this piece with straight grain and it looks like it's long enough just by just by yay much and for now the math is going to be just yay much. So that's the initial thinking part. So for the math part I'm going to put you on a tripod and I have two different approaches here. One with uh, easy math and one with a little more math and the calculator, but either which way it's done in about two minutes each. So math one is done with a tool such as this. It's a bevel gauge. It looks like this. It kind of folds and pivots and does nothing else. There are no numbers on it whatsoever and it's made for copying angles. What you do is line it up on the underside of the seat on the stock and the blade you line it up to be parallel with the broken leg or match the broken leg like so tighten it and you have a you have an angle there measured this angle is greater than 90 degrees I hope you can see that the legs of the chair are tapering okay they're tapering both ways actually so they're tapering this way this would be vertical here just for contrast there that's about vertical so they're tapering sideways one way there and they're also tapering sideways there so it's tapering in two different directions it's a compound mitre angle that needs to be cut at the seat as well as at the end where the foot ends I don't want to take you off the tripod but up top here there's going to be another compound mitre angle exactly the same as it makes with the seat so because it's away from the vertical in two different directions it needs two angles so angle one angle one and angle two are likely to be the same so this seems to be angle one and just for contrast if I spin it around there and do this on the other side it's a little bit out there's a little gap there as is so it needs to be readjusted you can see that it's gappy it doesn't lie flat against the chair's leg here at the base but let's measure the angle that we have on it for the for this side because it did match this side here I just put this spare leg there so it did match this flawlessly and what you do is grab one of these kiddie protractors super straightforward here on and match it up like so center to center let me just put my hand into it like so and if you line it up there so that the center lines up with the blade you can read that it's about 5d there four degrees out from there four degrees out from vertical vertical being 90 degrees okay so very straightforward four degrees nice done and if you measure the other side you'll find that it's five degrees very straightforward okay you can do the same with math and with a different math with a slightly different approach you can measure the length of the leg needed. So this works with a small scale project such as a chair but if you have a longer project to determine the angle you're going to have to use a little trigonometry and measure two things. So not the whole 
chair is in the picture, I am aware, but it's going to work this way too. So what I have in my hand is a plumb bob, very straightforward, and the plumb bob hangs off a string. I'm going to hang this plumb bob right here to the inside where, where the leg starts. Let me just kind of hold everything together there. That's where the leg starts, in this corner or this corner, wherever. I'm going to hang this plumb bob. When I do so, and that takes a little fiddling, I want to put the chair on a piece of paper, such as this one, and I drew around the leg. Just any kind of scrap paper, it doesn't really matter what else is written on it. And uh, I just drew around the leg. Then the plumb bob is going to give me a location and that location needs to be marked on the paper. You have to study the plumb up, so I'm just speeding up the process. And it makes, it falls on the paper there, and you have to make a mark there. Once you have your mark, you can remove the chip. And what you need next is a square, like this. I know it looks like an L, but this L is a square and draw a square line from the inside corner of the chair's leg. Now we need to zoom in. There, from the inside corner of the chair's leg through the mark the plumb bob made. And you need these two numbers, 43 millimeters from that corner to the plumb bob's mark and 53 millimeters from there to there. So you need these two numbers. You also need a third number, the length of the line or along the vertical, the length of the whole plumb bob line all the way to the tip, all the way down to the paper. That you can just measure simply, like on a floor, in this orientation with a tape measure, just like so, vertically down, whatever, and just read it at the underside of the seat there. So I have a number there, 590 millimeters in this case. What happens with these three numbers is uh, three very simple divisions. No, just two. Let me just zoom in. There. So that's... There, you're looking at the math. It's a tangent function. We have the long part of the triangle that's from the seat down where, it hit, where the plumb up tip hits the floor there. Or you can just measure from the floor to the underside of the seat. There's the underside of the seat there. So that's the that height is 590 millimeters and then you need to know how much it is out from the vertical sideways. So in one way it's 43 millimeters and for the other way it's 53 millimeters. And then I just enter the following information on a calculator, a scientific one. So, second function tangent, and maybe with a bracket, say 43 over 590, because it's opposite over adjacent toa. Opposite over adjacent, close the bracket, and there's your 4 degree angle, exactly the same stuff, plus change. Exactly the same stuff that was determined with the, with the uh, bevel gauge and the kiddie protractor. The same can be repeated with the 53 degree, so 53 degree, 53 millimeter length, same number there, and you're gonna get the 5 degree. That's the other length, other angle where the bevel gauge was fitting a little imperfectly or imprecisely. So those are the two numbers. Uh, one of them can be selected on a compound miter saw's tilt. One of them is gonna be blade tilt and from the vertical, another one is going to be rotation on the mitre table. Okay, so that's a flat rotation. And either which way you set it up, the once you've got the stick, you can rotate it into position so that it works. You just have to cut both ends consistently the same way. So those are the two angles that are needed. And this is the same angle that's going to be needed for some more drilling to do because these 
these little cross braces also need to fit and they are also not at 90 degrees they are just on this side of 90 degrees of course 5 degrees less than 90 so it's the same 5 degree angle or 4 degree angle depending on which of these crossbars you're going to so setting it up on a drill press on a tapered piece of uh, wood or a tapered shim is gonna get you uh, the uh, drill the whole locations drilled in at a 5 degree angle that's needed for the replacement of this leg and then just remove these two screws there and two screws there and then it's done basically so that's a little bit of math that's needed for the repair of this $30, 30 chair and uh, I am aware that with the math and with the thinking it's gonna be more than an hour's worth of effort put into a $30 chair but it can be fixed and there's no reason to throw it away